I was white, and I played D4. Hooray! And she resigned because I'm a grandmaster. Next game. <laughs> okay, D5. And this is called... Queen's Gambit. Yeah. And what did she Except do, the Queen's Except Gambit? Accepted. 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 You can spell it either way because we're in the South, so I don't care. <laughs> E-A doesn't matter. Okay. I, I accept both spellings. Except when I'm not in the South. Okay. And whenever somebody plays the QGA, I always play this move, but it's a funny reason. And actually, the reason people do stuff in chess normally has to do with the way they first learn chess. And even though they're 1,000 or 2,000 points stronger, that's the way they've always been doing it. So if I'd never faced the Queen's Gambit accepted in my life, and I had to learn it now, I wouldn't be playing E3. But I was facing the Queen's Gambit accepted when I was six, seven years old, and I did not like being down a pawn. So any variation where white is down a pawn, I wasn't doing that, even if the computer said it was good. Also, there were no computers. And so when I was really young, I was like, well, this wins my pawn back, queen a4. But nobody did that, so I was like, all right. But e3 is the best way to win your pawn back. But grandmasters normally prefer knight f3 or e4, but that's not what I learned when I was six. So Now, a lot of people like to keep their pawn, and I get to beat them. Yay. They play here. Queen F3. And then Not yet. Give them a move. Yeah. Here. Now, A6 doesn't work because that pawn's pinned. Uh, and if you play C6, also doesn't work because, as he was screaming earlier, Queen F3, Queen F3 and there's, that's not good. Yeah. Okay. So, when I play E3, I get my pawn back. Yes. Okay. So, she let me get my pawn back. And I was like, yeah, my pawn back. All right. And we play chess, because that's what we do. Got to play chess. La, 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 exactly. La, la. Okay, not too interesting. Okay, now in this position, it's very common for black to take. And now you can sacrifice a pawn, which they don't have to take. If you don't want to sacrifice a pawn, you can play rook d1 and get your, and get your pawn back. Okay. But she didn't take. She played bishop e7. Now in these openings, when I'm taking on c5 and you're taking on c4, there's two possibilities. One is your bishop already moved, and one is your bishop didn't move. So I'll ask the class. When I played bishop takes c4, had my bishop already moved, or was on its original square? Who remembers? It was a long time ago. It was on its original square. Yeah, it was on f1, and I went here in one move. Hooray! I actually used to play it, so I know what happened. Exactly. And she played bishop e7. She already moved her bishop, so now I take. She has to move it again. Okay, so I played e4. But she tricked me. She played queen c7, not doing any of that. Now her queen is defending her f-pawn, in case I ever do that. And her queen's coming over here. So if I play silly, she might even mate me. Like if I go here, and she plays knight g4, you see how the queen wants to go there? Yeah. And you see how the knight's defending it? Yeah. That means she's going to play knight d4 next move, and if it was her move, she'd be winning. Knight yeah. d4 just wins because my knight needs to defend me. Okay, so I didn't play a silly move. I played e5 as I explained. And now she made a mistake. She played knight g4. Actually, that's not a mistake. Her next move was a mistake. And I played bishop f4. All right, now, obviously the knight's not good here. If I play h3, you're gonna go here. Boo! Okay, not the Chinese player. I'm booing like bad boy. <laughs> so what she should do is say, well, my knight's here, my other knight's here, my queen's here. That's a lot of attacking on e5. I should keep attacking e5, and she should break my rule and never play f6. Then if I take on f6, she can take my bishop. Then she can try to win the e5 pawn. But she played b6. Boo! Okay, b6 is a bad move. Because she's not trying to win my pawn, and her knight's just going to get kicked over here, and she's not castling. Okay? If she did castle, I couldn't lecture on this game, so it's good that she didn't. This is the castling versus the non-castle. Okay, so she played b6 for obvious reasons. In queen pawn openings, especially when you're black, this bishop gets blocked a lot. That happens to you guys all the time. And you're like, I want to get my bishop out, but I can't. However, it's often good to fianchetto your bishop. That's sort of a nice diagonal. Okay, so she's like, oh, I'll do that. And I'm like, but I castled and you didn't. And she's like, what? Okay. So I played knight c3, 
developing my piece. Here I come. This should be seven. 94. And now this is her last chance. And um, she didn't want me to, you know, destroy her knight on g4, but you really got a castle. She played bishop e7. Um, now she is from Cuba. Somebody mentioned Cuba. She lives in St. Louis now. But you'd think she's French with that move. All right. So bishop e7, not good. That's just like, oh, I can do whatever I want. I don't want to lose my bishop for a knight, so I'll just retreat. But the king is still here. So we have to attack the king. Rawr! Rawr! If you don't attack the king, then black's going to castle. I can't let that happen. So I played. Rook d1? Knight d6. Knight d1, she castled. Knight d6. Yeah, knight d6. And then she castled, and I said, that's illegal. Now, if you're playing in a tournament and your opponent castles here, especially queenside, which is funnier, and your opponent castles kingside, and you're like, you can't castle when you're in check, and they're like, what? Then the director comes and says, yeah. Now, your opponent does this, and now you get the director again. You know why? Why? You already touched your king. You already touched your king. <laughs> so she's got to move your king. Okay. So if you make an illegal move, and you can legally move it, you have to. She played the obvious move. Take, yep, and I played the obvious move. Take back. Yeah, take now her queen's attacked. Okay, so she moved it. Darn. Okay, now again, I don't want her to castle, because then she'll castle. So I played knight g5. Now I want her to castle. Because I'm threatening queen takes knight on g4. That's called a discovered attack, because I discovered it. Unfortunately for her, <laughs> I'm also threatening knight e6, which is incredibly winning. Okay, you can't only play knight e6 because you'll get crushed. And then your king's on e8. So for example, since your knight's attacked, let's move it away. Right, that moves it away, right? Yeah? Okay, now, rawr, rawr, I'm mad. Man, it's harsh. Okay, um, never mind. Yeah, and here's the only move, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And now... White's, uh, white has permanently stopped black from castling. It'll never happen. Okay? And one thing I want to explain to the class, which I've explained before, but not in this class, when you can't castle, there's two issues, the one you think of and the one you don't think of. In my opinion, maybe not most grandmasters' opinions, the one you don't think of is more important. Most people who don't castle, they're like, no, my king, which is correct. There's another issue, which is, no, my rook. When you don't castle and your rook is on h8 the whole game, that's not so good. Your rook should be doing things. So if we turn on the engine, let's turn on the engine. Even though white's down a piece, it says plus 7. I think the computer wants to castle, right? And not only is it plus 7, it says every move is plus 7. If there's one plus 7 and the rest are equal, that's a tough position. My intention was to go here. Check. I could. Wouldn't that be checkmate, though? No. Really? Well, no, because king f8. In fact, that's what black's going to play here. Oh. Yeah. Then king f8, I got my piece back. Yay, I'm not down a piece. And I'm threading all of your pieces. Okay, so the computer is like, oh man, you stopped her from castling, and you stacked a piece, but that's good. Now, she didn't like knight takes e6, and that was correct. And she didn't like queen takes g4, and that was correct. So therefore, she didn't like her position. <laughs> and if she had canceled, she could just move her knight somewhere. So she played knight g e5, sacrificing a piece. And the reason is, she's 14, and she's master strength, so she plays for tricks. It looks like I'm winning a piece for nothing. Takes, takes, takes. I'm up a piece. But she wouldn't give a piece away for nothing. She has a trick. What next move is her trick? F6. F6 isn't a trick. I play queen takes e6 check. That trick don't work. <laughs> that trick don't work. That trick don't work. She has another trick, one you don't see. Castling? Bishop g2. Castling up a piece. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. not really a trick, that's just being down a piece. Yeah, yeah. Bishop g2, you're down two pieces. Yeah. Uh, Truth hurts. <laughs> uh, fourth the queen. Oh! The with the, oh, F6. <laughs> Oh, F6 now. The first time you said it was wrong, but now it's right. Uh, the problem with F6 is I take check, and you're down a piece still, and you're, you just got worse. 
Anyone? It's too hard for the class? Queen C6. Queen C6. Threatening mate, which is to black's advantage, mate. and the bishop. Mate. Oh, okay. Yeah. Couldn't you just block the mate with the bishop? Then she takes it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, the truth hurts. <laughs> okay, so I don't want to get mated. So I play d7 check. Now she can't mate me. Yes. Okay, the point of d7 check is if she moves her king, she's not going to have her castle. If she takes with the queen, that stops both of her threats. Queen takes mate and queen takes bishop. She's not doing that. So that stopped her from castling forever. Okay, and here's the issue. If you take with the king, I was planning on going check, and then bishop f1, following my rule, always play bishop f1, that stops both of her threats. Stops me and stops the bishop. So queen takes d7's bad, and king takes d7's bad. That means d7's a good move. So she played king e7. I stopped mate, knight f3. She's down a piece, so she played. Queen takes c4. Queen takes c4, and now I gave her a check. And now the truth hurts. So I really punished her for not castling by playing d7 check and then queen g5 check. So king takes d7 is risky because knight e5 check wins your queen. So don't do that. Even riskier is king f8. That's even riskier. Then you get mated. So she's got two choices. They're both great. King d6 or f6. Oof. I wouldn't vote for either one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Man, the what truth about hurts. King D6? Yeah, Maybe. King D6. That's what she played, the safest. And the only move that's safe. Okay, so I played Knight E5 attacking her queen, defending my pawn, and threatening Knight takes F7 check. If her queen goes to D5, I can pin her queen to her king. What about Rook D1? Yeah. Rook D1's also good. D D1. Yeah. Rook D1's fine. She played Bishop D5. Here she resigned. Notice, king on d6, no good. King never castled. And as I said earlier, when your king doesn't castle, that's not good for your rooks. Okay? I did everything I could to stop her from castling. d7 check, queen g5 check. Castling was illegal. When your opponent hasn't castled, don't let him. 